In the 20th century, bread really became a factory product. The health qualities, the keeping properties, all of these things, they were radically changed by industrialization, by the, the domination of white flour. We became used to eating breads that have basically everything good for you, everything that we kind of evolved to, to rely on from a dietary perspective, stripped away from them. Not only is there more nutrition in the, the, the whole grains that we're using, but there's also more flavor. The, the knowledge about how to work with them has been quickly lost over the, the span of the last century. This is the buckwheat honey rye dough. It's 100% rye. We already mixed the dough with the rye, the starter, the honey. We let it rest and now we're shaping it. We're rolling these in buckwheat groats. This helps it not stick to the basket and it's just like a nice texture. In 2017, I opened Lost Bread with FCM Hospitality with the goal of making baked goods and other foods with locally sourced whole grains that were not only healthier, but also tastier, more delicious, more appealing because of it without making the product so expensive that people couldn't afford it. For us, operating a larger scale bakery was really the only way to make the financial side work to be able to not only sell our bread for an accessible price, but also to pay our employees a living wage. We're in a craft hall right here, which is on Delaware Avenue, right on the, the banks of the Delaware, working right next to Mainstay Independent Brewery, and then Craft Hall Kitchen, which is the restaurant and the, the bar that we're sitting in right now. Our main workspace is on display to the patrons of the, the restaurant, which is really nice because you get to see your bread being made. That tells you a lot about what the kind of product it is instead of being dumped out by a machine in a factory. In early 2020, we decided to stop using any and all white flour, which means that all of the flour that we use in the bakery, we're milling ourselves on this mill here, and it's coming from grain sourced from the area. Our whole bakery is set up so that we can learn more about what grains work best in each product, so we can get to know kind of each grain, get to know its quirks. So we do the grain share every month where we focus on a different grain, and then we bake with it, we research it, we read about it, we end up with all sorts of products some of which are horrible and should never see the light of day. Others are so good that they make their way into our regular production. But in doing that, we learn how to mill the grain, we learn what it's good for, we learn about you know, what it likes and doesn't like. And we end up really learning in general that from all the grain that can and should be grown in this area that's good, you can make just about anything. What I really love is how much room for experiment there is in this place. And grain share is a great example of that because every month we have a different grain. We just have a meeting and we decide which grain it is and then we start thinking about stuff that we can make specifically using that one grain. We made a sourdough rye brownie. It doesn't have any flour in it. All the flour that is there is just pre-fermented in the actual starter. And there is a rye whiskey caramel that I use rye whiskey for, and then we have a rye pistachio streusel. For us, finding a way to get together and develop products together every month, there's a lot of feedback and discussion. We're all working to not only get our creativity out, but also to improve. We're going to be making this cake every day. Forever. Okay. Yum. Next. Uh, mushroom miso crackers. This one is the same dough that I did before, but I I didn't use butter, I used oil. And what kind of mushrooms did you end up using? I think I'm gonna use like portobello mushrooms. I think the recipe is so flexible though that you can like work with whatever mushrooms you got. As the bakers are busy developing their interesting products, I'm busy putting together a little zine, which is information about the grain that helps people understand the bigger picture of how this was relevant to our cultural history and our cuisines around the world and also who else is using it locally in our community, where they can purchase it locally, what they can purchase from us, and also tips and recipes for how they can use it in their kitchen. To show you some of the ones that we've done so far, so we've done einkorn, einkorn. We love puns. You spelt it, you dealt it. For spelt, 
We get our spelt flour from a grower in Halifax, PA, Small Valley Milling. For that particular zine, I'll interview them and talk about like why they started growing spelt and how they're adapting to climate change with that particular grain. In doing research each month, I realize how little I know about each of these grains and how much context I need to understand in order to set this up for, for our customers so they really you know, can grasp like what these grains are and the importance that they've had to our culture and to our cuisine. The farmer's role is to weather the climate change and to figure out what will work and then we really have a responsibility to turn that into food that feeds people and that sells. Grain is a really high return on investment in your land. It's been the backbone of regional agriculture in this area in the past and needs to be a big part of it again in the future.